the former worship pastor for Hillsong. Darlene Check reveals why she left the megachurch. Mark said to me, would you like to have an adventure? Her battle with cancer. There's nothing quite like it when you're hanging on for your life. And the times when she questioned God. I said to him, this doesn't feel like love. On today's 700 Club Interactive. Well, welcome to the show. This year's Boston Marathon is in the history books, but the internet is still talking about two unlikely heroes that emerged from Monday's race. One runner, a veteran who lost his leg while serving in Afghanistan, picked up his guide and an American flag and crossed the finish line. Earl Granville of the Pennsylvania Army National Guard walked the entire 26.2 mile course. And believe it or not, this wasn't his first marathon since his accident in 2008. This was just his first one without using a hand bike. Well, the other runner, Jose Luis Sanchez, a Marine sergeant who was also wounded in Afghanistan, was also seen carrying the flag as he completed the race on his prosthetic leg. It was his second time to run in the Boston Marathon. His goal this time around, to inspire others, and he is certainly doing that. Wow. I'm inspired <laughs> I'm in and exhausted I, watching I've got it. two good legs. Yeah. I wouldn't want to take on the marathon. Oh, boy, uh, but, that's brutal. Yeah, brutal, kudos to that. Inspirational. Well, we want to go from Boston down to Florida. Several years ago, Calvary Christian Academy in Fort Lauderdale opened up their school to international students. And one of those students was an orphan from Nigeria whose friends called him Big E. And because of that program, Big E wasn't just given the opportunity to move here to attend school. His host family decided to adopt him. And their son soon became the school's rising basketball star. Until the day he was rushed to the hospital. My name is Elu Chukwu Easy. I'm from Nigeria. At school, they call me B, B E E. A basketball court, they call me Big E. This year we won the state championship. As you can see, this is my medal. May 5th, I was diagnosed with brain cancer. I didn't know at the moment that I had anything going on in my head. I had a headache that lasted for four days. I was brushing it off. I thought it was normal headache from practice or workout. But day after day, I felt so unconscious, I couldn't remember what happened. The only thing I can remember is being in the hospital and waking up my dad telling me I have to have a brain surgery that night. Put yourself in my shoes. As a 17 year old, or as like any other human being, we fear death. We fear what's gonna come after dying. You have two places to go. It's either you go to heaven, or you go the other way. Or when I was close to dying, I can feel it. But I remembered Jesus saying, I am the resurrection and the life. And that moment, I knew if I die, I know where I'm going, which is where God prepared for his lovely people. But if you don't know or don't understand the Bible verse that I just said, I can say that you're missing something. He created life itself, and he can heal and resurrect anybody that's dying. If you believe that Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life, you have nothing to fear. Several weeks after surgery, I went into therapy. I couldn't walk, I couldn't talk. I was light sensitive, but I never gave up. I was more focused in Jesus than any other thing. Right now, according to my last MRI, the doctor said that I'm cancer free, but I'm gonna be on the watch. As I live my life now, I have a purpose. I have a reason why I live, that I have faith in him, because whatever he says, that's what he's gonna do. That's wow. great faith. Whatever he says, that is what he's going to do. When you watch those dunk shots and you hear him say, I couldn't walk, I couldn't talk, mm -hmm. what a recovery. That's quite incredible. We want to thank Calvary Chapel in Fort Lauderdale for that story. It is 
inspirational and filled with hope. You know, maybe you don't ever really latch on to the significance of eternity until you're faced with it. Right. In which yeah, there's nothing like there's yeah. nothing like being yeah. in a near death circumstance to you start to wonder where is my faith, and mm -hmm. then the mist will clear, and you'll find that you're standing on solid ground. You're Amen. standing on a rock, and His name is Jesus. Well, speaking of rocks, well, on Easter, CBN's Operation Blessing teams visited many of the victims of the Palm Sunday bombings in Egypt. They killed 44 people and injured over 100. And Obi was there, Operation Blessing, bringing them flowers and gifts for the children. Many of the men who died in the bombing left behind families that were in need of support. Operation Blessing will be providing food for a month for several of the families that are in the most dire need. And Operation Blessing is also bringing relief supplies to the persecuted Christians in Iraq. When one Christian town in Iraq was finally free from ISIS rule, Operation Blessing was immediately on the scene, helping to start the first new business in the city. Take a look. Well, Operation Blessing is there helping persecuted Christians in the Middle East. And whether that's the victims of this terrible bombing in Egypt or those who are trying to recover their communities in Iraq after ISIS, uh, you wanna, if you want to help that, all you have to do is call us, 1-800-700-7000. Or you can go to the Operation Blessing website. It's ob.org and just say yes. I want to help. I want to help the persecuted Christians in the Middle East. I want to help rebuild Christian communities in Iraq. Uh, it's all made possible because people like you care enough to give. So call us, 1-800-700-7000. Terry? Well, up next, Darlene Check's worship songs are heard in churches around the world. But when Tess confirmed she had cancer, her faith was tested like never before. And then he said, no, no, what do you believe, daughter, about how much I love you? And it took me days to answer. When she found her answer, it changed her life. And she explains why, so stay with us. Darlene Check is the songwriter behind modern worship anthems such as Shout to the Lord and Worthy is the Lamb. Recently, Wendy Griffiths talked to Darlene about her latest project and how God's faithfulness during the darkest time of her life became the inspiration for her new songs. Here I am safe in the arms of my Known as a worship leader who brings people straight into the presence of God, Darlene Check has written over 100 songs sung by millions of worshipers worldwide. Formerly the worship pastor for Hillsong Church, she's performed on and helped produce one platinum and 16 gold-selling Hillsong albums. She's a best-selling author, cancer survivor, and now senior pastor of Hope Unlimited Church with her husband, Mark. Some people may not realize, Darlene, but you left Hillsong six years ago. Uh -huh. Why? There was a sense of frustration, and it was not at anything or in anything, but you know, I think God does that sometimes when He wants to shift you out of something that is so mm. comfortable. He it's unfeathers. Like, he it really does, and and I couldn't really put words around it. And then Mark said to me literally just one day, he said, "Would you like to have an adventure?" And I'm like, 
what do you mean? Are we talking fly fishing? I've always <laughs> wanted to do fly fishing. And he's like, there's a little church an hour up the road um, on the central coast. But he said, they need a pastor. What do you think? Wow. I was like, what? Like in our whole married life, the only thing we ever said we never wanted to be was senior pastors. <laughs> we finally said yes. And, it and of course, you still sing, I'm sure. Yeah. I still sing. I still lead worship. I mean, it's right. who I am is what God has given me to do. Well, Darlene, your your worship is so passionate. And uh, and it's because your relationship with the Lord is so real. And But it hasn't been easy. Uh, I want to talk about your battle with breast cancer. Yeah. I had been chasing and getting this lump checked for two years. Um, I'd gone back numerous times and they did say, you know, it's just fatty tissues. And at that time, at that time I was in my late forties and I'm like, well, welcome to the forties. Everything (laughs) is fatty tissue, it seems. Um, So I went back and I just felt that I I said to them, you need to biopsy this Mm. today. And so by the time I left that night, it had been confirmed that it was breast cancer. And then a week later, I was having surgery. You lost your hair. I lost my hair. So I had my wig. I called her Betty. And um, my church, you know, used to, we had a good, Betty had her own little fan club there for a (laughs) while. And I would still lead worship, but... To be honest, you're battling with so many other factors that actually that became a very minimal thing. Yeah, but here so. you are, you know, perfectly healthy. You spent your entire life worshiping <laughs> God, leading others in worship, serving God. Yeah. And then this happens. Yeah. I mean, did you ask the question why? You know? Yeah, I did. Yeah. You know, I... Um, and I don't think there's I, anything wrong no, with that question. No, no. Yeah. And, and actually, that's what I learned. You know, I guess early on in my Christian walk, you know, people said to me, never question God, you mm. know. But actually, I just found him to be such a good father. He's such a good father. And he spoke to me in amazing ways that I'm sure I never would have learned some of these things on mountaintops. I thought I knew how much he loved me. But then one day he asked me, what do you believe? And I'm like, I believe this and this and this and this. You know, I was a very good Christian in all my answers. And then he said, no, no, what do you believe, daughter, about how much I love you? Mm -hmm. And it took me days to answer because I said to him, this doesn't feel like love. But he's a good God. He's okay. He's got big shoulders. He's okay with our with our questioning and our, you know, I think the bigger the question, the bigger the answer, you Amen. know. It may be sickness, it may be loss, it may be disappointment. And sometimes you feel like heaven's silent. God, how, how can this be loved, you know. Yeah. But actually, if you go back to the word, you know, it just underpins everything. Yeah. You know, if you're, if you're listening, he is speaking. And I think sometimes trouble and and intense hardship um, can make us, it made me at times, you know, block our ears, shut our eyes. It's like too much. But actually he's speaking. He's encouraging us. He's loving us all the time. And I tell you what, though, being in worship and declaring, you know, the truth of Scripture through song and you know, because music gathers all of who you are, it helps you in your auditory senses. It helps you scientifically. It says it helps you at a molecular level. And wow. so doing all these things and then declaring the living word of God, I mean, there's nothing quite like it when you're hanging on for your life. Well, Darlene, tell us how you're doing now. I feel really good. I'm, I'm, I take a tablet now that's pretty hard going. Um, got another nine years to go, hallelujah. But, you know, I just feel the grace to do the journey. I'm cancer free. I'm, yeah. I'm, I live differently. I refuse to live busy. Mm. I live very intentionally. And, you know, I don't travel like I used to. Sure. Um, I eat differently. I 
I parent differently. I mean, some of the lessons that I've learned, I wish I'd learned them a long time ago. I've always been a thankful person, but I live more thankful today. You are great, great. It's Darlene's thankfulness for God's love and faithfulness that inspired her latest project, Here I Am, Send Me, which she started during her battle with cancer. This message in me has been like, you know, every day, Lord, teach me to say, no matter how uncomfortable it is, right. no matter how awkward it could be, no matter, I, I don't want to put his will through my sieve, you know, through my lens. I just want his will. A lot of wisdom to glean from what she's been through and shared so vulnerably. And um, just a woman who's had a tremendous impact on thousands and thousands of believers and continues to do so. Well, up next, a bulging disc leaves a man in crippling pain. It just felt like there was like a knife in the back of my thigh with each step. At some point, I actually got to where I couldn't drive. Uh, couldn't walk very long distances. Even standing was painful. Sitting was painful. See what gets this horse lover back in the saddle pain-free. Plus, we're gonna be praying for you and your needs, so stay with us. We'll be back in a moment. I believe the time has come to begin a battle of annihilation. They divided my land. They divided the land of God. In these three weeks, people felt like there is going to be a second Holocaust. I just started this job 10 months ago. Now you want me to plan an entire war in two days? Yes. People were very motivated. But to say that there was no fear is telling a lie. You're scared until the first shot. The minute the first shot is being fired, you're bent on completing your mission. If we break through those walls now, the whole world will stand on its head. To be right here, Mota, and not to go in, history will never forgive you. Are you going crazy? You'll set the whole Middle East on fire. On May 23, CBN is going to be releasing this wonderful film, In Our Hands, The Battle for Jerusalem. What it shows is the story of the Six-Day War as told from the point of view of the paratroopers who came to the Temple Mount and announced to the world, the Temple Mount is in our hands. You can't understand today's headlines, and there are lots of headlines about Jerusalem, until you understand this history, what happened in 1967, uh, the significance of it 50 years ago, the significance for the paratroopers, the significance for the world. And we want to celebrate the 50th anniversary in style. So we're releasing this film on May 23, which on the, on the Jewish calendar is Jerusalem Reunification Day. June 7 on our calendar, uh, the Gregorian calendar, is the actual date when this happened in, his, in our history. But on the Jewish calendar, it's May 23. So we want to celebrate with them. And if you want to be a part of it, all you have to do is go to our website, inourhands1967.com. There's a place there where you can just put in your zip code and it will show you the theaters in your area that are showing this wonderful movie. Uh, we've got, I think, around five, 540 theaters so far have signed up for this. Uh, and so we want to have a great showing throughout the United States to say, Let's join together and fulfill that wonderful psalm, Psalm 126, that when the Lord restores Zion, the nations will say, the Lord has done great things for them. So if you want to attend, you want to see it, go to our website, inourhands1967.com. There's a place where you can buy tickets and do it today. We want to have a big advance 
ticket pur purchase, and if we get that, we'll have more show dates uh, with Fathom and have more theaters show this wonderful film and get the word out. So do it. Go to inourhands1967.com. Well, Jesse has spent a lifetime training horses, but not long ago, he thought his riding days were over. A back injury threatened to keep Jesse out of the saddle for good until the day his wife turned on the 700 Club. Jesse Anyabila has been training horses for over 30 years. One day he was cleaning out the stalls and putting the manure into bins. I just probably had gotten to maybe the sixth or the seventh one. When I lifted it up, I just heard a big pop and felt a big sharp pain in the lower back. When Jesse got home, he told his wife, Charmaine, I looked at his back and saw that it was a little swollen. Very shortly after that, I started developing a sharp pain down the, the back of my leg. So I went to the doctor. The doctor gave me an examination, and, and it indicated to me that, you know, it looks like you may have really severely hurt that muscle back there, and you may have a pinched nerve. The doctor prescribed medications for pain and swelling, but they only worked temporarily. So I went back to the doctor, and. She said, well, I think we need to take this a little bit further. You need to see a specialist. An MRI showed Jesse had a bulging disc. Given the choice of surgery or cortisone injections, Jesse opted for the shots. But when they wore off, he was still in pain, and it was getting worse. And it just felt like there was like a knife in the back of my thigh with each step. At some point, I actually got to where I couldn't drive, uh, couldn't walk very long distances. Even standing was painful, sitting was painful. Jesse went back to the specialist and made an appointment for surgery. That was a really, really difficult time because I had to wrestle with not only being able to enjoy the riding, which I'd done for 30 years, I was wrestling almost with my mortality. I was like, wow, am I gonna be able to do much of anything? During this time, Charmaine had been praying for her husband. I have faith that he will he would get better. One day, she came home and turned on the 700 Club. Gordon and Terry were having words of knowledge for viewers. I'm thinking, you know, I'm not so sure I really believe that people receive these kind of healings, but what do I have to lose by just, by just giving in and giving it a try? For someone, you've got a um, pinched nerve in, in your back. So I actually put my hand over the back and I close my eyes and I let myself be immersed in the prayer. God's healing that. There's numbness, there's pain, uh, weakness, and God is restoring all of that for you right now. It was really one of those calming kind of thing that came over me that really made me feel really good and warm and just for the first time relieved. He did not immediately share with me and then when he finally shared with me, I was like, hallelujah, you're healed. He had surgery scheduled and I said, cancel the surgery. Jesse took a little more convincing. I still felt like this is gonna come back. I didn't really at that point have complete faith. That changed the day of his surgery. I said to the anesthesiologist, I don't think he needs surgery today. And I explained the reasons why. He said, well, I guarantee he's not gonna be healed like that, it would be through medicines, through um, surgeries, through treatments like this. So when the doctor came in, he began to examine him, did some tests, and then he looked at him and says, why are you having surgery today? And then I clapped my hands and did like this because <laughs> cause that was confirmation to him. Once I heard it from the doctor saying, maybe we shouldn't do this surgery, I really, recognized my blessings and that I had been healed. Jesse got back in the saddle as soon as he could. Today, he's still riding and still pain-free. You know, I have challenges where, you know, it's like, God, I want it now, but we have to wait in God's perfect timing because His timing is always best. I love Jesse's honesty. He wasn't sure all of this worked, but he said, what do I have to lose? Uh, what do I have to lose? What do you have to lose? Just in an act of faith, because faith is very simple, and you can just be like a little child. Don't have to understand it all. Just have to act and say, okay, there's been a promise, and the promise is that God will stretch forth his hand and heal disease. 
So in an act of faith, do what Jesse did. Lay a hand on that area of the body that needs healing. Terry and I are going to pray, and we're going to just believe God. Lord, we lift the needs to you right now. We come boldly to you. And as people are laying hands on that area of the body that needs healing, we join together with them. We say out loud to it, be healed and be made whole in Jesus' name. Terry, God just gave you something. Wait, somebody, you either have or have had a ruptured eardrum and you've lost hearing because of it, but today the Lord is completely restoring that to you. Just receive it. Lift up your hands and receive it in Jesus' name. Now, there's someone you've got a head brace on. There's a chin strap, a strap across your forehead. It goes around the, the back, and I don't know the problem. I just see you in this head brace, and God is healing and he's restoring whatever your need is. He's answering it right now. In Jesus' name, amen. If you need prayer, we're here for you. It's our honor and privilege to pray with you. All you have to do is call us, 1-800-700-7000. Here's a wonderful word from James. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. God bless, we'll see you again.